if you believe, as Elon does, that all vehicles will be electric and all vehicles will be autonomous, which is something I believe, all car companies have to do it or they go out of business. It's almost by definition. If you don't do this, then you won't be in business. And so they should. And so you wish them well, and, and you hope that then a whole fleet of different kinds of vehicles will come out, whether it's van shapes or two-person vehicles, bus-like things. You, no one company can do it all. Right? Do you think Apple is really working on a self-driving car? Yeah, I mean, there's, it's hard to. How optimistic are you about an Apple car? By the year 2022? Yeah. Apple's thing is to try to do what somebody's already done already, but do it better mm -hmm. and different. Do you think they Sometimes can do they it? Sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. Got that watch is not really grabbing me, or the Newton, there's been a few misses. You're, you know? So you're not a fan of the Apple Watch? No, no, battery life for me. Uh, for, I have a lot of watches, I, I actually wear them, um, and uh, I cannot fathom, in my personal use case, the charging issue. Do you think that Tesla should focus more on lower priced, more mainstream electric cars? I mean, the Model 3 which is supposed to cost $35,000, but that's a base price. I mean, beyond the further yeah. cost reduce. Okay, that's, it's a great question. And that is their long-term vision. You either have many, many, many billions of dollars to put into plant and equipment to mass produce something of that scale, mm -hmm. or you do it iterations. If you take a current Model S, which is arguably a very expensive vehicle, mm -hmm. right? If you factor in the total cost of ownership over five or seven years, your fuel costs and maintenance costs that are so much lower, your total cost of ownership is not that different from a high-end Ford Taurus. So if you start with that next vehicle, let's say $35,000 vehicle, and you do that same analysis, it might come out to being like a Civic, yeah. you know, and that to me starts to sound like a more mainstream vehicle. I know that you are like super fascinated with machine learning. What is your vision for how AI changes our lives, let's say five years from now? For the next five years, and probably a little more than five years, but five-ish years, what we call AI will be these specialty eyes, things that are creepy or magical, depending on your point of view, in their ability to do something that we thought was somewhat human, like drive a car, um, uh, let's say manage our schedule and figure out what we might want to do today. It'll creep into medical imaging analysis and diagnostics in the, in the field of medicine. There'll be all these areas where recognizing a pattern, pattern in human behavior, pattern in a picture, pattern in the world around us, traffic patterns, for example, they'll just see things we didn't see. Once they point it out, they'll be like, oh, wow, I can navigate more easily through this uh, traffic or optimize my calendar in a way I just couldn't see before. And I think that will start to acclimate us to what we call AI slowly, as opposed to out of nowhere, boom, you know, humanoid robots that are smarter than us right. and take our jobs. Right? So how concerned are you about Google's ambitions in AI? <laughs> how concerned? Does it scare you? A little bit, just because there's a bit of uh, a reckless abandon that uh, almost like a techno-utopian flair with the occasional, you know, when pressed, well, okay, of course, we'll be cautious, but almost like this is the inevitable trajectory that, you know, technology is our future, we will make good pets for these AIs in the future, and, you know, life will be good, and they'll feed us little kitty treats and stuff, and, you know, there's, there's something almost like a Pollyannish, oh, what could possibly go wrong? The AIs I worry about are the ones that we may not ever know exist, that are purely digital, that are living off vast information feeds, and operating in a way that we can't even fathom, that ideally, in their case, maybe we may not ever detect, detect their existence. Mm -hmm. So how is your interest in AI and machine learning, how is it playing out in your investment philosophy? I think the way we engineer things is changing, mm -hmm. from everything that we think of as engineering to things that feel more like growing and iterating a solution mm -hmm. very rapidly. What do you mean? To, so imagine, much like a newborn baby that can learn anything, you build literally like a brain in a box. It, it is exposed to photos, like Google has done, and starts to recognize cats on the internet. But that same program could have recognized anything on the internet, or it could have recognized speech, or it could be used to try to find tumors in mammograms, or other pathology slides, or radiology slides. And so you have these generic learning machines in silicon that you now can apply to many different things, and you don't actually know how it works when it's done. Just like we don't know how a brain works, we know how it got there, but we don't know what it is. Could these computers someday take over the world? Well, yeah, but why? Like, because they become smarter than us. Yeah, but like, to what end? I think, I think the long run. Like a lot smarter. Yeah, yeah. But then that's why we make good pets. I mean, like, what they would do is we wouldn't know that we're pets. They would, like, all one day we wake up and like, oh my gosh, I figured out how to do a fusion reactor. And like, I think it was my idea, right? Imagine a gap between us and our pets. Like, my cat thinks it's hunting that little toy mouse with the catnip, right? It thinks it's a fierce hunter, right? But it's in a house, right? Um, and so I think it would be similar. We wouldn't even know. 
Um, and I think the long arc of human intelligence and cultural evolution is that we have less and less violence over time. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of evidence for that. And I, why, why would a more intelligent being use childish, like kindergarten level, you know, that's my toy. I want that mm -hmm. thing, as opposed to a much more sophisticated manipulation of us.